What you're about to see is a digital walkthrough of the exhibition, Speculations on a New World Order, which I curated for Shrine Empire. The walkthrough was hosted by Serendipity during their Digital Arts Festival, which happened recently. Um, this online exhibition was conceived during a strange moment, which was at the start of the lockdown here in Delhi, and addresses several concerns, ongoing concerns that had become amplified in the wake of the epidemic. One, one part of doing this exhibition was also learning about the digital space and also realizing that it is a space like any other with its, with its, with its own context, its own history and relational attributes and of course its own audience. Um, additionally, it also came with the realization that it is too soon to theorize this moment that we are still living through. What is possible at the moment is a coming together of ideas, dialogue and conversation which happened with the wonderful artists whose works are presented as part of this exhibition. It also brings in the specific bodies of knowledge that um, can be accessed through these diverse range of works that all bring forward the artist's unique research and process. Uh, and you will hear more about the exhibition and the works as you watch. So just to give you a little introduction on this exhibition, uh, this was an effort to kind of put together everything that I, I mean, through conversations with artists and friends and colleagues, these were, this was an attempt to put together several of the ideas that we had been thinking about around this um, time of quarantining and of a global pandemic that is kind of sweeping across. And um, one of the key ideas that informed the exhibition was that we cannot consider this moment in time, this moment in history in isolation, but only at the confluence of various political, social, economic, and ecological concerns that have been in motion for a very long time. So, um, which, is, which is why this uh, exhibition does not just talk about illness or the idea of well-being, but expands into several speculations, several considerations for the, for the future that we might be heading towards. And uh, if you notice, a lot of the works that are on view here are um, older works. And because it came from uh, uh, the faith that uh, several, of what, uh, several of the thought, thoughts that we are being preoccupied with at the moment, is, um, has been a preoccupation for contemporary art for a very long time. And this is also about bringing together various strands of thought in one space. Another uh, focus was another thing that I was personally preoccupied with, along with the team at Shrine Empire, uh, was the um, idea of what does it really mean to go digital? What does it mean to curate an online exhibition? Because first of all, it's not the exhibition, the experience of the exhibition will not be spatial. Because uh, there is a difference between moving close to a work, being in physical proximity, being in an immersive environment with the artwork and zooming into an artwork. So that difference in proximity is something that completely changes in my understanding the experience of an exhibition and our engagement with it. So this was also an effort to counterintuitively um, not translate what would have been a physical exhibition into a digital space, but rather conceive it for the digital in a way that just um, the, the way by which we engage with artwork online itself, the nature of the medium and the nature of the platform adds meaning to the exhibition. So several works were reformatted for digital viewing. And also another thing that I realized is that somehow our, en our encounter with narratives online is linear, which is not exactly the same as being in the physical space of a gallery, where it's, where it's, it's more of a meandering experience. And um, another, another thing was that what does, what can, what, what, added meaning can the digital bring towards this project? Because as we know, one of the key aspects of contemporary art is that it, um, it brings in, uh, it adds, I mean, it draws from the meaning that material and medium brings to the artwork. So this is also an attempt to be inconsistent with that. 
and of course the of course since this is the first time i worked on an online exhibition as well so all of this was developed in close conversation with the artists who were all wonderful and on um, several of their practices i knew already very well so it was also uh, more possible to put it together in the brief period of time because um, another another aspect of the internet is that everything is just so timely and current that when you're occupying that platform it makes sense to stay in conversation with the timeliness of the online digital space that we occupy as well um so i'm going to start the exhibition and other ideas can come up as we discuss the works if you uh, keith it would if you have any questions that you feel would be relevant for the audience please feel free to address it while i'm speaking sure sure there's a question and answer box so in case anyone has any questions please type it in there and we will go through these questions towards the end of it so i'm going to pause the videos while i'm speaking and i think all all the links have been shared with you already you would have a link to the exhibition so you can watch the videos on your own time um this is it was important to start with kathiyani's work because as i mentioned the possibilities that the, that the digital space allows more than spatial is linear so it was important to work with that linear format for instance when you scroll down on your instagram feed or your facebook feed i mean social media is our primary encounter with the internet so it was about all your search results right google search results so that linearity is something that i have maintained i mean of course the linear narratives itself are quite suspect so of course we can we can discuss that further perhaps in the discussion segment um but uh, it was important to uh, start with kathiyani's work because what i realized is that our immediate reference for the global pandemic have become the walls of our own home because we we are uh, interaction with our outside environment is highly limited restricted and we keep accessing news information online we have we, we have this like overflow of corona virus related information right now but uh, there is no physical reference there's no visual reference for the virus itself it's this kind of phantasm that's kind of enveloping the entire world so it was important to start with the walls of our home and then consequently dismantle or uh, the idea the normative idea of a home with concrete walls because as we all know those who have been most affected by um this whole um the whole outbreak has been those who are most those who have been made vulnerable in a way by certain by the by certain political social and economic uh as uh, circumstances that they find themselves in and that is not necessarily related to the to the pandemic itself right that is something else that was always there and these divides have just been amplified by the current pandemic so it was important to start with this idea of the home and kathiyani's work was particularly significant because if you look at it it's an apartment complex and it was inspired by a uh, home uh this is this work was made while she was doing her masters in london and uh there she lived in an apartment complex and she was reflecting on the various lives that might go on inside so what she does is she removes the fourth wall and opens it up almost theatrically and what you see is um a certain kind of existential cycle a cycle of the everyday that that the characters the subjects are trapped in for instance on um, there is a girl when you watch the video you'll see that there's a girl who's trying to speak a thought a thought bubble a speech bubble appears and then kind of disintegrates and there is a um, uh, a young man taking care of an elderly man washing him and so it's also about the absurdity of life and also the extent to which we are disconnected in a way we do not realize that um, that someone who lives next door is living their own version of the same lives that we are leading and the doubts and anxieties that color that experience so uh, i can i mean uh, the video is looped endlessly it reminds one of a gif format as well so if you look at it it just keeps looping endlessly and that also adds meaning to the work in a sense 
So while I was speaking to the artist initially, there was a conversation whether we should show it as a video or as a GIF file because, and, and it doesn't really make a difference, but the vocabulary that it brings into the exhibition is again one that we are, we, we are very familiar with on the internet. Moving on to the next work. This is Afra Shafiq's work. This is a work that I knew from a long time ago. So I worked with Afra for the first time and I worked on the previous edition of the Kochi Biennale with Anita Dupe. And there, there was a co-commission with the Liverpool Biennial uh, where, uh, uh, with Afra, where she produced Stitch, which is a fantastic work again in QR code, but it was a physical work. And that had, that was the larger QR code with embedded QR codes within it that contemplated the domesticity that women have been immersed in their entire and for centuries, regardless of class differences. So um, what she did was that she had this extensive archive of images and um, um, uh, other research material. And it speculated based on the idea of stitching or embroidery and also the idea of the cross stitch, which is actually quite numerically co coded. She speculates that that might have been the beginning of computer coding and uh, graphics and cybernetics. So the speculative reading of history and uh, the connection between women and domesticity and the radical, how imagination itself becomes a radical act within that kind of, um, uh, that, that uh, space of confinement and how that can, so then the idea of embroidery is a way to, or stitching is a way to imagine worlds beyond when it's out of access to you. And this is a work that really reminded me of the condition that we found ourselves in where several of us have a confronting domesticity in a way that we've never had to before. And it was indeed that that's how the conversation began. And then we figured that it was important to reformat the work for reformat the installation for digital viewing. And uh, so that's how we kind of ended up on this work. So she's uh, all the Q embedded QR codes, uh, most of them are different and speak to our ongoing moment more closely from that space. So if you scan into the, if you scan these QR codes, you each, each includes uh, each um, QR code will take you to a, take you to a curated selection of links that includes her original animation found poetry and also um, found film. Again, looking at um, affinities between the feminist subject position and idea of domesticity. And from uh, Katyani's work to Afra's work, we see the idea of home as we know it, all of us who might be part of this conversation with access to a stable internet connection right now, even during these times, um, have uh, it, it, it kind of builds upon it, it critiques, it pokes holes in that idea of the normative home, which is the microcosm of society in many ways, right? If you look at classical studies and sociology and the idea of family and the home. And then what about those without it, right? Because that was the primary conversation. And also when you, uh, at that point of time, at least when I was conceiving the exhibition, when you go online, when you read the news, there, was, there were these images of migrant workers just streaming uh, across, trying to get, go home. So then it was that the idea of the home was something that we were all globally consumed with at that moment. So it was important to kind of work with it. And then we come to Anoli Pereira's video work, which is uh, constructed from actual surveillance footage caught on a CCTV camera of a robbery. And it's um, almost humorous. It's a, it's satirical and it, it, it kind of, again, speaks to the kind of paranoia that we live in, in uh, consuming surveillance footage on a C uh, from a CCTV camera as of watching a movie, you know, from a, or watching surveillance. Uh, it's, it fo follows the vocabulary of what you would say, see in Hollywood cinema of, a, uh, of what's going on in your home from a panic room, for instance. So then it again becomes a critique of that kind of these divisions and segregations that you build around that we have all, we've been complicit in building around ourselves. And um, 
it is a critique of that and it, it creates a critique of the kind of alienation of capital that it comes with. And it also suggests that what is going on in that moment has also been once again, a magnified experience of a certain kind of alienation that has already become normalized. Um, then we go to Chandan's work. And um, this is a selection from a series of images that um, he'd been working on for several years now. And uh, as the title of the work suggests, On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous, it is really about transience and mortality and the beauty of vulnerability, and which is essentially the condition of being human. And um, over the last several years, he had been dealing with themes of mental illness and violence and um, dementia. And uh, these are impressions that he's collected from everyday life around him over those years. And this closely relates to um, the haiku by Kobayashi Isa. In this world, we walk on the roof of hell, gazing at flowers. Couldn't be better put. It would be interesting when you view it yourself, it would be interesting to also zoom into the images just to see the kind of texture and That's also sort of why within the format, we plan three levels of engagement, a holistic view, and then like uh, maybe the way you would see it in a gallery. And then, but then like a zoomed in version where you can kind of really see the detail of the works. It's interesting to also again note that so, uh, some of the works from this series that Chandan has made was first actually shot on a camera phone for his social media. So then there's also that interesting relationship. So it wasn't really conceptualized to be a project in itself, but it took that life later on. Okay, now we come to Sharbendu Day's work. This is an ongoing series of work, which he's never shown before, even though he started in um, 2016, started working on this in 2016. And for him, this project um, developed at a, at a time when, <coughs> sorry, at a time when um, there was a lot of conversation in his um, surrounding about climate change and the ecological crisis and uh, that we are constantly heading towards. So this was again a speculative look into the future where he imagines a world where oxygen becomes a commodity that is rare. And socioeconomic divisions are amplified to a point where there is a huge difference between the outside and a highly climate controlled um, environment of the inside. And again, animal life and plant life becomes a prized commodity and enters inside as companions. So there's a certain kind of nostalgia as well in that future for a lost past. So this is a glimpse. So there's a con constant contrast between outside and inside. So outside you see these dreary images. And it's so interesting to see that this futuristic dystopia actually exists in our contemporary. These are images that are drawn from our contemporary, whereas indoors have has the this these these images have been staged and constructed by the artist in collaboration with actors So then again, the idea of, of domesticity and the idea of a home becomes completely altered and subverted in this project as well. Then we come to Amar Vaseem and Sarah Sheikh's again older work, which was also looking back to our present moment from a 
fictional future that might perhaps be realized. And um, it's, it's a completely different, so it, from when you read the, I would highly encourage you to download the artist text and read it because that'll give you the complete context of where the work is coming from. Um, and that piece of text is a work in itself as well. So it really addresses a time when civilization as we know it have ended and all that remain are material traces of our contemporary existence. And then um, we have a future society glancing back to the civilizational error that we occupy at the moment. And they document these traces of um, living situations and um, try to understand it. And they create this distinction between what they call palaces, which is a reference to elite housing situations and uh, and uh, quarters where the subspecies live, which is uh, a reference to these transient, impermanent shelters that, that, that we see all around us in construction sites and everywhere. So if you zoom in, you can read the text. So the work was originally shown with the photograph or satellite map of the location and um, text framed together and together in a way. But this work was again recomposed for digital viewing as the original. Uh, so, so another thing is that when you see a photograph of an artwork in an online exhibition, you immediately feel that you are removed from the most immediate experience of the work. So that's why it was important to kind of remove that because even if we have a three dimensional immersive viewing experience, which can be constructed, it um, is limiting in the sense that it's still, it's still going to be viewed on, on, on a laptop screen, right? Even if it looks three dimensional within that, and you are going to be viewing it from a context that is not a white cube or uh, an ideal viewing condition. You're going to be looking at it in your home or your office space. So it was kind of important to not venture, at least for now, I don't know, maybe if the project calls for it, I might consider it in the future. But at the moment, it was important to stay true to uh, the nature of encounter that is possible for an online exhibition and if necessary, reformat artworks for that as well. So these are again a reference to makeshift structures. Once again, I would really encourage you to zoom in, read the artist's text because it is part of the work and also download his larger, uh, their larger essay here. This was once again a body of work that I was familiar with and I was uh, deeply reminded of in our current moment and felt was impossible to bring back. Um, but the other body of work by the artist, I wasn't as aware of and, um, and they reminded me that of this work, which is a study for a monument that was of, of palatial proportions that was never actually realized and all that's left remaining is rubber and remnants of, of a semi-construction. And uh, it's interesting how, once again, I encourage you to download the artist text for this body of work as well and read it closely because there are several, um, it, it is so, uh, un, it's, it's unfathomable to this future society that is looking back to a moment in time that this monument was a celebration of everything that led to the politically, philosophically, psychologically, that led to the annihilation of our civilization.
So once again, more of the artist's text. Text is such a huge part of this work, so I would really encourage you to go to go look at it. Um, this is a very recent um, series of works, a selection from a very um, recent series of works by Anupam Roy, where he is looking at, um, again, this is such a close relationship with the digital because these works are constructed out of screenshots of um, cinema since the First World War, all of which address marginalized subject positions. And the artist is very critical of the, um, of the again, narrative agency assumed by the creator of these mm. films, for instance, and the kind of, um, there's also a certain objectification, right? So he's kind of, kind of counter that by juxtaposing two screenshots and looking at the impossibility of representation of any sort. So all that this image really represents is the dialectic. It doesn't claim to tell another story. So this work was again really important. It, it functions um, in a, a, a very important role in this exhibition because right now, while uh, I made a reference earlier to all these images of migrant workers that has been circulating on social media and news channels, and uh, it was kind of important to remain in conversation with that through a work that questions that form of representation as well, in a sense, at least gestures towards possible criticisms within that visual. landscape. And um, so if you read the text closely in this work, you will see that a lot of the works also make references to movement and labor. So uh, in continuation with the artist's politics, he does not see this as the beginning or the end of representation. He encourages his viewers to download the image and add to it and work on it should they want to. And continue that cycle. So, what the artist is again trying to say is that identity is something that is not static. It can never be represented because it's always continual. It's always in flux and um, which in itself also negates subjugation on its basis. I mean, a lot of these are uh, statements that um, recall several aspects of contemporary politics, especially from speaking from Delhi. This is a video work by Gautam Kansara. And when I reached out to Gautam with this project, um, the, I reached out to him because I knew that he's been interested in news for a very long time, since 2014, I think. And he's been collecting screenshots of headlines and um, newspaper clippings from the New York Times, which is something that he grew up with um, uh, for a very long time. So when I spoke to him, he mentioned that he has an entire archive of important, quote unquote, important and headlines from the New York Times over the last three months, which is when the whole um, epidemic became as relevant as it is today. And um, here again, what you see is he's talking about the limits of information and bias in reporting. And also for me, especially it gestures towards a certain kind of um, 
uh, how this moment in time, like how this coronavirus related news has in a way eclipsed uh, news that might have been relevant in other times. So when you closely view the various headlines that appear in Scramble and Dissipate, uh, you also are able to see certain geopolitical priorities and editorial bias that shows up even in the New York Times, which is considered to be a very respected publication. And this is even though this is specifically related to his childhood and um, the New York Times, I felt that this was a work that was quite relevant to think about in our time as well. And then, um, so we moved from Katyani's work to Afra's work, references to domesticity, to completely dismantling what it means to have a home through Amar Asim and Sarah Sheikh's work and Anupam's work. And then uh, we looked at the processes, the larger geopolitical, economic, social processes that this is contextualized within. And then it's also important to, at least uh, for, for me and the artists, it was also important to think of the possibility of rebuilding from this moment as well. What kind of future are we looking towards? And here we have uh, Bhagwati Prasad's um, drawings on animal skin, which um, is uh, his reimagination of Begampura, uh, a 15th century poem by Saint Ravidas, which imagines a utopic society without pain, a completely egalitarian society without pain or sorrow. And it's interesting because in Bhagwati's work, he imagines the possibility of this utopic society in our contemporary moment, drawing from the organic, inorganic, biological, chemical, technological, material remnants that have accumulated in our contemporary moment, and the possibility of using those same things to build further from there. Some of you may have seen his project at the Max Muller Bhavan in Delhi recently, right in February, right before everything went down. And um, there, there was also a performative aspect to the project where he was cooking and, eat, and, and his audience, the participatory audience was eating together and exchanging stories, recipes, ideas, and thoughts. And through that exercise, through cooking and the act of sharing, he imagines the possibility of a new genesis or you know, a new beginning. And once again, it's interesting because um, and when you think about community kitchens around the city and how fundamental they are to survival at the moment for several people and the possibilities within that, within the act of cooking together and eating together as a liberatory utopic idea is, was important to consider within the exhibition. It's also interesting that the body of work does not isolate, it's, it does not other technology and scientific advancement, but manages to create this um, synthesis with indigenous oral histories and vernacular histories in a way. And then we have Samantha Batra Mehta's work, which is um, again addressing the continuity of life and how despite differing attachments to our relationship with the idea of nationalism and territorialism, how despite all of that, we are all linked together in genesis and also in destruction. And she uh, situates this collage against the backdrop of, of an ideal environment that uh, you're so closely connected to Earth itself. And then the collage cutouts, these prints that she's cut out and juxtaposed on her painting, again, represents a certain kind of 
um, Anthropocene, for lack of a better word. So that brings us to the end of the digital walkthrough. Now I'm open to take questions from all of you. Thank you, Anushka. That was quite lovely. Mm -hmm. and very you. interesting to see the variety of work. And we have a few questions in the Q&A box already. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sana has asked, could you expand the videos, please? I think the link on the chat will redirect her to the video. Yes, and yeah. I encourage you to go back and view the video. That would have um, taken too long. And I didn't want to eat into Premjish's time because he's speaking right after me. So I would encourage all of you to go back, download Anupam's images, um, read Amar Vaseem and Sarah Sheikh's text, and view the videos because it is also it would be beneficial to also have a personal encounter with the exhibition outside of the store. Hmm. And I have a question regarding artist bio section. Yes, it's available online. So uh, when you finish viewing the exhibition in this format, there is a link that says enter exhibition page. So if you click on that, it will take you to the gallery page where you can click on each artist's name and have get more information about their work. So you can access that. Then I'm reading out Arishi's question. Hi Anushka, how does Anupam's work help in foregrounding particular identities and voices in categories that otherwise tend to subsume heterogeneity, such as migrant or multitude? Also, how is the text that is placed within each work produced? What are its meanings, sources, intent? So Anupam's work is, is also inspired by Hito Sterl's statement that the digital Im image is a fifth generation bastard which means that it doesn't really, it, it denies represent, it, it denies say uh, copyright or like certain, if you know Hito Sterl's work, you know how she works. She works with a lot of found images, especially poor images. So Anupam was interested in the idea of the poor image and which is why he very carefully does not um, say cite his sources at all because this, this is this is made consists of this is made from a huge archive of screenshots he's taken over the last year, and um, also the text then becomes part of that. These are part of screenshots that he's taken uh, with subtitles, and um, and it's just incidental that it creates those meanings in those particular ways, and that's part of. So the uh, the process of making the work itself is a gesture towards heterogeneity. Mm. And multitude also is something that factors into his process. So then the process con uh, remains conceptually aligned to what he's trying to say through the work as well. Arshi has another question. COVID-19 has brought up many concerns about ecology and its impact on the progress of the Anthropocene. How do you see this public narrative on rethinking industry driven living evolve over time. I don't know, in some ways to be very optimistic, I feel that uh, this moment of COVID-19 could potentially point to a crossroads um, and where we could perhaps take this time to reflect on a certain kind of civilizational error that we have all been complicit in and um, work our way forward ethically and more consciously um, because we have been forced to confront with divisions that we have always taken for granted in a much more amplified um, way that you just cannot ignore. So uh, that is one way forward or of course there's always um, just there's always the option that you treat this as um, an aberration and then you go back to exactly how we were living before. So through this exhibition as well, it was uh, important to kind of think through these possibilities, both ut utopic and dystopic possibilities, and um, consider the future at the confluence of these varied possible narratives. Do we have any other questions? I so, think, if you would yeah. like to share something, that would also be great. We have Dr. Divya Singhal in the chat box, mm -hmm. uh, really complimenting your effort because she was a little skeptical about exhibitions in a virtual and digital space. Mm 
Mm-hmm. She says you've done a fantastic job, which I feel too. Congratulations to you and you. Shine Empire for this lovely exhibition. Thank you all for joining us as well. And uh, we'd be breaking here for about 10 minutes and we'd start a session with Premjish Achari along with Anushka herself in about 10 minutes at 12.30. The link remains the same. So please join us after the short break. Thank you, Anushka. Thank you, Thank you so much, much, Keith and to Serendipity for inviting us here today to speak about this. And congratulations on this fantastic initiative. Yes. yes, thank you. See you in a bit. See you in 10 minutes.